uh, who has brought that out in the past. He shows a lot of flexibility. Excited to see if we're going to get any new picks today. Well, despite 6-11, I think the teams are sort of more slowly adjusting, which makes sense. But we'll see what happens here in the draft for game number one. TSM will hang out on the blue side here for our first one. Immortals over on the red. And already starting to see some changes. A first ban Zyra for TSM, followed by the first ban Rise from Immortals. Yeah, Adrian has been playing that Zyra. Uh, it is quickly emerging as the S tier support right now. A fantastic laning phase, great poke. It scales very well into the mid and late game. Has fantastic wave clear uh, for when the bot lane duel inevitably roams uh, to mid. Some more bans being taken away here, though. Yep. A lot of focus on Bjergsen, kind of as expected. Uh, Rise taken off the table. Azir as well. Uh, Bjergsen is a monster on those champions. I definitely do not want to give that up. And I, I like the TF takeaway here from Poe Belter. He's a, he's a guy who's shown a lot of flexibility with this champion. And because of the way that they like to play a lot around side lanes, Poe Belter is a guy who's helping out the side lanes. What champion better to do that on than TF? Yeah, and I like it. There's a TF ban. And we'll say, all right, fine, having as the ban. Yeah. As they take away the Nidalee, actually, from Rainover. So that jungle is still being banned. Swen will be the last one here. We'll see what TSM want for pick number one. Yeah, and I think the Swain obviously, you know, could be another Bjergsen special, but Haunter uh, can play this as well. It has been in the top lane a fair bit. Uh, definitely very strong. And with Nidalee taken off the table, Kindred is available. You know, Kindred traditionally was kind of the, the tip or tab ban that people were uh, taking off once Nidalee would get taken out. But um, Kindred being left up here hasn't had nearly as much success, I think, you know, in this updated patch as it has in the past. Uh, especially in competitive play, it's a lot harder to pick up all the bounties, uh, which now give you, you know, the added damage on your Q that had been taken away. So it's definitely a lot weaker in the early game, and uh, Rek'Sai is going to be your first pick. Mm -hmm. Actually, interesting to see TSM clearly consider Kindred. Yeah. Maybe showing that, hey, we know you can play this. Take it if you want. We'll take the Rek'Sai instead, which is arguably the best jungle to take on this patch, given yeah. that both Nidalee and Kindred were sort of altered immortals, though. You never really know what's going to happen. I expect the first few picks to be safe, but watch these two teams as the series goes on, because these drafts could get wacky. And I wouldn't even fault Hooney for playing that. He might just want to. He might just feel like it today, but instead, Ooh, he feels like Aurelia, and there's karma for Adrian as yeah. well. Uh, Aurelia is beastly in the top lane uh, with the new Triforce buffs. Uh, has been absolutely crushing. A great champion there for Hooney, who you know uh, had his own adaptation on the build. He was going with the Frozen Mallet basically every game. Uh, a little bit of mixed results against Energy when he was playing that, uh, but definitely a very, very strong on the champion. Uh, Karma as well is probably you know that that pick right below Zyra as far as supports go. Uh, gives you the speed up. It's kind of the same principle as the Sivir. Uh, you have the AOE speed up. You have strong laning, so you can afford to pick uh, ADCs with a weaker laning phase. You know, if Turtle wants to play something like Twitch or something that's more a heavy scaling champion, this can put a Band-Aid on it. And if you want to go early game, well, all of a sudden, your support is going to be smashing them uh, right with you. Yep, and TSM, they actually go for Lucian and Vladimir. So Vlad, one of the big picks here on this patch and both last week as well. Yep. But Double if sort of along with Piglet, has been one of the AD carry plays that's still holding on to Lucian as a pick that they really like to play. Most of the other ADs have actually stopped playing Lucian entirely on this patch. Yeah, Lucian, uh, the, the range on the Q pass-through is lower. The W range is lower. Uh, Q damage is also lower, I do believe. So, you know, some, some pretty heavy nerfs. But uh, we talk a lot about double lift and how fantastic his laning phase is. This is still a monster champion, you know, in that 2v2 double lift. Loves to match up in that and try to smash his opponents. So, you know, if you can get ahead on the Lucian, you can definitely still snowball. You can definitely still uh, become very, very strong in the mid and late game. Well, pretty predictable stuff here from Immortals, perhaps, as we're going to have a look at Sivir to pairing with that Karma, particularly with Zyra Band away. I do like this from Immortals, and Graves, actually, with a jungle of choice for Reyna, so not going for that standard, I'm going to say this lightly, counter pick of Olaf, which he usually likes to play against into Rek'Sai. Yeah, he's fantastic at the Olaf. Uh, definitely feeling like they maybe want a little bit higher damage this time around. Um, I think it, it, it's a pretty intelligent pick. Uh, when you are matching up against something like the Vladimir, you want to be able to have enough damage to, to chunk him out, to take him down very, very quickly. You cannot play, you know, slow champions and let him kind of hang around. So, uh, you know, a lot of physical damage coming out. We'll see what the last pick is going to be from Immortals, but they are definitely indexed very heavily towards AD, which can be a concern uh, depending on what their last pick is going to be. Sounds like right. Pope is on Victor Duty. That's what that sounds like. It could be, yeah. <laughs> Well, TSM, they have to finish their draft, so with 10 seconds left, we'll see what they take. It could also be the Anivia. You know, Anivia has been kind of that counter pick for Vladimir. Uh, we'll see if uh, Pobelter wants to opt into that. Uh, but the last two picks here for TSM, Trundle and Nami. I like it. Nami, one of those other range supports. 
good call on the Anivia because they insta lock it yeah. as soon as the draft passes back to them, and, and now we're finished with the team comps. Yeah, and these guys obviously are indexing pretty heavily towards lanes. Uh, you can see TSM picking Trundle into the Aurelia. Trundle is a fantastic a 1v1 matchup against basically everything. Um, we do also see, you know, when you're locking into Lucian, you want to be able to go aggressive in lane, uh, give yourself some help with that. The Nami is a fantastic laner. Um, we even see the exhaust is, is not taken right now by Biofrost. He may decide to swap this up, but Nami is, is so, so strong in the 2v2. It gives you a lot of sustain. You have a lot of poke. Uh, you're able to enable um, Lucian to go aggressive with your E. It gets a little bit of bonus magic damage, the slows as well. So it's going to be a pretty explosive 2v2 lane if we do get it. Uh, very excited to see if that's going to happen. And unsurprisingly, these two teams with excellent drafts to kick off game number one, starting to get a few of the trends in the meta game as the teams and players work through the patch. Yeah. The coders will shake hands, should be very proud, given that we are going to have a very nice start to game one. Sort of standard, but very exciting to see how these two teams square off in our first one. Yeah, I can't wait. I, I think that as far as drafts go, the two are, are very even. You know, one thing, Trundle's not going to have that super tank to kind of ult and steal all the stats from him. So, um, you know, much more of a kind of aggressive lineup from Immortals. Well, we've seen aggression certainly from both these teams. As the players load onto the Rift, so tweet hashtag TSM win or hashtag IMT. IMT win to at Elevel Esports and let us know who you think is going to come away with a victory. As always, these two teams have very vocal fans. It's great to have you all here joining us in the Battle Arena. I love it. Let's play some League of Legends. It's time for game number one, TSM versus Immortals. We already got the chance. You knew they were coming, and here it goes. I cannot wait. I'm really hoping we do get to have uh, the lane matchups of you know, top lane versus top lane, bot lane versus bot lane. I want to see these guys duke it out. Huni and Hanser uh, have been two of the very best top laners this split, and both the bot lane duos are incredible. Uh, so far, we do have that kind of line of scrimmage a setup. Both teams are spotting each other out, and uh, we'll see if they're going to be willing to opt into this because, you know, everyone has the information that they do need uh, to get those lane assignments. Well, it's one of those things that's almost like, hey, maybe for game one we get standard lanes. Bit of battle early, though. Haunts up. Getting a better end of that early, early trade. Gets the ward. Yeah. Oh! oh he, no. I don't know if he canceled that or if he lost vision as he was swinging. Yeah. But usually when you are swinging, uh, the animation will finish even if the ward goes away. So I think he, he might have uh, double clicked. He might have mashed it for it. Unlucky. Unlucky indeed. And Bjergsen hits a bit of poke there from Adrian. Onto though, not too miffed about the ward kill or lack thereof. Just having a dance next to Spence Garen as we do see Wild Turtle and Adrian making their way to that top side of the map. So Yeah, they're opting out of this 2v2. And that is something, you know, Dyrus uh, and the guys at the desk kind of talked about. Uh, is, is the strength of double if in the 2v2, uh, picking Lucian plus the Nami. And it's not going to be something that Adrian and Wild Turtle want to uh, actually match up into. So uh, we are going to have lane swaps, and uh, early on, we're going to have the invade from both the duos uh, trying to spot uh, each other's junglers out, uh, see if they can delay them, see if they can harass them. And, um, ooh, deep invade actually here. Adrian looking for something. It's also the Spence trouble. Garen. Big damage there on the early stages, and the wolf goes away. Sven does smite it. Haunts are still turning it around, but Sven... Awfully low. Adrian's still getting chased down though. They're battling for this last wolf. Who's gonna get it? Looks like it might be Haunts up. Wild Turtle wants it. Adrian steals it away. Wow, that is a really big invade for Immortals. They actually, not only uh, do they steal both the little camps away, they actually force Fenskar into base at level one. So he's super delayed. Look on the other side of the map. Rainover and Huni were not slowed down really at all. I mean, they got pushed off off the Gromp. They couldn't, you know, it's not like they can do a full jungle clear, but they're both very healthy. Uh, Rainover's already level two, clearing up his buff. And Sven's gonna be in this rough situation where. Monster has to go to lane. He has to help push the turret now. So this is a, a solo clear that's going to have to be done by a level one Rek'Sai. Uh, TSM already a little bit behind on this. We'll see if Rainover can extend the lead and kind of get up in Sven Skaren's face. Yeah, well, Sven doing those crux. Rainover doing his on the other side of the map as the mortals are going to start this standard push. Sven finally hits level two, but he's uh, pretty significantly behind Rainover. About a level in XP so far. As we'll see what Sven decides to do now. He's pinging that strong side of the map. Looks like he's going to go over to the blue buff area, which makes sense. But we are going to get at least a very standard start to this game. Two different 3v0 pushes, and these towers should fall very quickly. These teams are absolutely practiced at this at this point. Yeah, they, they definitely are. Uh, two of the very best teams. You know, Immortals always praise uh, for their macro play. I think it really is their strength. Uh, TSM, definitely a great macro team as well. Uh, but to me, they've always been more about you know, the individual skill than they have just the strength of their macro game. Well, you can see both teams actually pushing pretty far forward. Turtle took some damage to 
try and pull that wave off a bit. So like Huni is going to stick around for the gold. Everyone's going to, I think, collect some of it, maybe. Let's see how long Immortals want to stay on this side, because TSM actually took the turret a little faster. Huni, though, as almost always, will get the bounce and the local gold from the tower. Yeah, and, and not like Sven Skarin's completely out of this game and that yep. you can look at the massive amount of, of CS difference, but still, it is a really good edge for Rainover. Uh, 17 CS, 18 CS to 5 right now, so he is significantly ahead and should be able to maintain that lead. Uh, Rainover is always a guy who's super aggressive. Everyone praises him for his map movement, for his control, and when you're gifted this nice of an early game lead as a jungler, you can often really extend it uh, and make it a pain for your opponent. Well, looks like we have swaps back. Although we're going to have some more tower pushing by the looks of things. Double lift currently up in the top side all by his lonesome, but Biofrost going to go ahead and join him. Total though heading down to that bottom side will push Haunter off that wave in the bot lane. Yeah. And we should have some more turret trading here. Haunter though did actually pick up a fair bit of that CS. It's all going to be crashed into the turret and they are probably going to lose this eventually. They're going to go for their own turret trade. Uh, but nice job by Hanser, kind of sneaking down, picking up some farm, getting that extra experience. So uh, that is a good little edge for him. And meanwhile, you know, this is supposed to be the, the Anivia counter matchup, and Bjergsen is kind of pushing Pobelter around pretty well here in the mid lane and, and not actually really playing afraid. Uh, I think it will pick up a lot for Pobelter once he does hit six, uh, as you can get those kind of ER trades uh, where you just get the, uh, the proc very quickly from that. But for now, we are seeing Bjergsen do very well, and he's going to be able to make his way up to probably an early cowl uh, and start ignoring a lot of Pobelter's name. Yeah, starting to see a bit more of this matchup, so definitely curious to track it as we move through, but Immortal's going to be busy with this turret now. 3v0 pushing. Adrian actually cancelled Haunter's recall, which is kind of rude, but Haunter will just waddle back to that top half of the map and keep pushing with his team. TSM might be a little behind on this push, but it shouldn't affect him too much. And Again, we have a very standard start to this game. We'll be curious to see what happens once the lanes open up as the models are going to claim that turret. Huni's sharing a bit of the gold this time. How very generous. Yeah, he is going to share that over. I'm sure he wasn't. It wasn't nope. his idea. <laughs> He's like, come on, guys, get out of there. <laughs> but uh, it is going to be split up. And uh, now we will likely have the teams uh, starting to meet up. This turret top lane actually wasn't taken out um, by TSM, who's actually trying to rotate down. I think they want to stop this dragon uh, as they have sniffed it out. and. They're all moving down here. Svenskeren has arrived. Bjergsen is here. Immortals is going to get pushed off of this. But, you know, good job by TSM. But if they can't take the top turret, it is advantage Immortals because they've already taken down two. Adrian. Oh, cancels the recall. Running away. Deep double is going to find here. him. Slows there. This is the first double if the first blood does go to double. Not done, Hooney. Oh, we are done. Oh. Teleports to safety. And Adrian, wrong place, wrong time. Pretty greedy spot to back. Uh, should have walked out with the rest of the squad. Does not hangs around, gets punished. Thank you very much, says Doublelift, as he is going to pick up a very easy first blood. And look at the CS advantage extending already over Wild Turtle. It's not the situation Turtle was hoping for, as they are now going to have to, you know, move into that 2v2 lane. And this Lucian is going to be big. Look at this top side of the map. You mentioned it already. Tower not down yet, but Haunsa, decent little wave pushing in. Might be able to take it now, although it does have two members of Immortals there. Huni actually just joining in, and Haunsa will have to give that up. He's two levels ahead and a decent amount of CS as well, but Haunsa knows it's yeah. not safe without Vision of the Jungle. Exactly. Doesn't know where Rainover is, doesn't want to risk it, and they will be able to eventually pick up that turret, so it's not the end of the world, as it is fairly low. Uh, but Huni is going to try to <laughs> fend off Haunter. Uh, not going to be able to do it though. Haunter should be able to take out this pink ward. Yeah. No problem. And and now we see the first buy uh, from Doublelift result of that first blood. He grabs himself a serrated dirt. Yeah, I don't know if Huni wants be in this trouble. though. Haunter actually just going in. He's 5-3 to three right now. Little low on mana. Oh. Dawson flash for the auto. Oh. It, and he gets the solo kill. And he gets out Scott Free and Huni uh, just did not want to blow his flash there. Was trying to be very greedy. Uh, and he's gonna get punished big time. Yeah, Sven and Rainover now fighting in the jungle. Rainover's level six, but Sven wins the early trade. Good coverage here on the top side to make sure Haunter gets away. And Rainover, this, this is dangerous. It is dangerous. You know, Sven took that red buff, which is massive in these early fights. Uh, Rainover should be okay to hold this off, though, as Haunter has to base, you know, unless they're trying to do anything crazy. TP back for a dive, I don't think so. Uh, but Haunter is going to have a massive advantage over Huni here, and Huni just disrespected his opponent, and he gets smashed for it. And look at that first buy, Tiamat already. Oof. 
it's going to be a, a rough a rough 1v1 there. And and here we have it, you know, Huni sticking around, did not want to give up the pink ward, and, and Hotzer says, <laughs> you can protect that, but you can't protect yourself. Huni still holding on to the flash, does get the Equilibrium Strike under the turret, but the Q was already queued up. Uh, does land, and he gets himself a nice, easy solo kill. Nice play there from Hornsa. We'll see where he goes now. He's actually heading bottom side. Going to try and clear that out, although I think TSM are doing the dragon, as the Wild Turtle and Huni actually pushing the top tower. Starting to see a bit of a trend as far as objective trades go. TSM will get the Infernal Drake for their trouble, but Immortals might get a tower out of the deal. Yeah, Immortals does not want to fight right now. They are basically just on the run. They are trying to avoid TSM at all costs. Uh, you know, Turtle has no interest in laning against Double Lift right now, and Huni now says, <laughs> get me out of here. I don't yep. <laughs> want to lane against this Trundle. Uh, so they're going to go for the trade. Looks like they can push down this turret, and they are going to have a two turret early advantage here. Pretty nice job there by Immortals, uh, making the best of a bad situation. TSM, though, does pick up the Infernal Dragon, uh, which is going to be big later. Yep, curious to see when that top tower falls down. You said it before, it's sort of like it will likely go down eventually. So yeah. expected value on the turret, pretty high but they will have to get it. And even then, there's still a turret behind. So interesting objective trades early on as we check back in with the mid lane. Bjergsen actually hanging out with a 20 CS lead over Poe Belter with the Vladimir. Spirit yeah. Visage almost completed, but Poe Belter just building up those early mana items. So nothing out of the ordinary just yet here in the mid lane. Hauntzer pushing up pretty aggressively, uh, getting a little chip on that turret. Gonna have to back off though, as he knows Immortals had base and they are gonna be arriving as a squad. Uh, doing a good job for himself though, it was a bit uh, over a level, like a level and a half up on Huni, which is pretty huge and a, and a nice matchup for him. Uh, Sven Skaren has really evened things out as far as the jungle matchup goes, catching up pretty nicely in the CS. And uh, mid lane, Bjergsen is extending a, a pretty big lead for himself, honestly, up 23S in recent CS and what is supposed to be a, a great matchup for him. So uh, looking like Pobelter is having a bit of a tough time. And as Bjergsen picked up that Spear Visage, it's just going to get even harder. Yeah, and it feels like Sort of the expected early game here for TSM. Three solo landers all currently winning in CS, although Huni is doing a nice job catching up after the early land swap trades. Immortals, though, strong macro game as ever. So 11 minutes in and a very even game. Gold reflecting that as well as Haunter. Fancies himself as a bit of a jungler, taking away that scuttle crab, but he knows he needs to buy time and wait for Huni to push that wave back towards him. This is honestly one of the very best things about Immortals, and I think it's what makes them a great team, is that regardless of what's happening, okay, we, we lost some kills here, yeah. we got first blooded there, that's fine. We're going to pick up objectives. They're always on the ball with trading turrets, getting the most out of bad situations, and because of that, they're rarely ever in, in extreme disadvantages. They may be behind in kills, uh, but they're usually right in there as far as gold. And now it's the taking that's scary, may want to die here. Lead. Yeah, Sven does want to dive. Turtle in trouble. Does spell shield with a knock up there or flat, but still gets stunned on the back end. Teleport in though, TSM now caught out between two turrets. Huni looking for a kill, double, takes out Turtle, and now Huni has to flash out of the way. Gets himself exhausted, but TSM are gonna flash in for it! Sven Skaren, so aggressive, claims the kill. Huge plays by TSM, and they are looking to crack open another turret, and they could actually, you know, move mid lane uh, and potentially go for a dive on Povelta or go for that turret as well, because it's a five-man squad up here uh, for TSM. Uh, they are pinging the Rift Herald, though they want to extend the lead uh, for Hauntzer. And we talked about it, TSM's almost newfound aggression. They know exactly what to do around the map, but they're not just waiting for it to happen. They are taking every advantage they see. Huge tower dive in the top lane, plus maybe the Rift Herald as well. TSM up almost 2,500 gold. That's huge. And Double is getting so aggressive, not punished for it. Now has a completed Ghost Blade uh, over, over Turtle, who is falling very behind. And Turtle is looking like he's going to be in a world of trouble if they ever do have to match up. Uh, double is going big. and. Uh, Sven Skaren with a nice path to that top lane, played the dive really well, waits for the spell shield, pokes it off with his Q, then gets the knock up. So uh, pretty much a flawless dive here. And we can see it started off. There's a spell shield, waits for it, pops him up. And look at Double If getting in there. They know exactly uh, the limits of their team. Cooney's already coming in. Double If finishes off the kill very intelligently. Had they retreated, could have got stunned up and maybe chased down. But a really great rotation as well from Bjergsen. He was up there first. Didn't need to get involved, but good stuff. He did my favorite mid lane TP, which is where you take Ghost and you run up there as fast <laughs> as possible. So with that new load cooldown, plus the Ionian Boots of Lucidity. Got those Lucidity Boots. Able to get up there nice and swiftly. Infernal Drake number two up in a minute 50. TSM looking to maybe start really snowballing this game away. And that top lane, which is the most even one so far as far as the CS goes. Huni, yes, up in CS by a bit, but Haunts are getting that Rift Herald. Feels like all three solo lanes are starting to tip in yeah. favor of TSM.
it is it is pretty even as far as yes goes but he has the solo kill he has the rift herald uh he is quite a bit ahead for sure uh rainover always you know doing his best to, to stay relevant farming it up he hasn't gotten involved really in any kills yet uh but because his farm is so high he's gonna be a solid contributor regardless yep i like the berserker graves as well just a bit of extra damage there for the graves yeah not really any cc he has to worry about uh, because swifty boots have been nerfed a lot of times people are finally starting to shy away from them a little bit more uh, i like the zerker greaves definitely going to help out and it's looking like uh, he may be building towards actually you know a black cleaver has has parts of that could be a sterix or something as well i think black cleaver will make a lot of sense with all the physical damage but base Ooh. check from rainover almost but and if he is going to cover rainover gets chunked about 30 percent hp tsm just trying to play aggressive with the drake coming up making sure they have control of the right hand side of the map it's, it's a really tough position for Immortals because there's actually no winning matchup for them right now. And, you know, Hootie's not in a position where you can just outplay Trundle, right? Trundle is just going to straight up outstat you if you go in on him. Oh, my God. Pearson does not care about that nope. damage. Big <laughs> damage. That's a Spirit Visage, blood. Yeah. Just chunking out the Anivia. TSM looking to really continue the dominance of this bottom side. And Hootie's top with no TP. That's pretty much a model saying, you know what? Take the Infernal Drake, you get this one. They know they can't actually contest for it. They're, they're weaker in, in every position. Uh, Huni is just going to try to split push it out, uh, try to pick up some farm and hope that he can get himself into a position where he can eventually 1v1. Uh, but it's going to be really tough as, as Trundle left his specialty so strong in this. Haunter gets the Rift Herald buff. It's going to be there for so long. and. Immortals is going to have to look for some serious outplay, and they're going to have to look for really delaying the game. They want to go late, uh, scale up on Turtle so he can catch up, and he'll get this Anivia going, and, and hope to just win in the late game fights. Well, Double Infernal Drake going to add to TSM's very snowball approach to this game, although things have slowed down a bit because Immortals are, I think, like you've mentioned, correctly seeding territory at this point. See what other more damage TSM can do, though, as Double Lift currently pushing down this bottom side, but looks like it's time to back up and spend some of that gold and... A uh, brief reprieve. Yeah, respite even. Ah, oh, we're done. <laughs> Why not both? <laughs> but, uh, reprieve spite. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but um, well, we do see that uh, Double Lift, you know, he's probably going to be going into the, the Black Cleaver build. Uh, so he is still going that kind of build that had been so, so popular. The Ghost Blade Black Cleaver uh, wants to go for that mid-game spike. And uh, Infernal Dragon is actually the most effective by far as far as te teams with a lead. So as far as the win rates go, if you're already winning, this dragon is way better than all the other dragons. Uh, but in close games, uh, they're all pretty close. So And I feel like the Drakes might be listening to TSM. Yeah. Because that's mean, Infernal Drake number three coming up. Oh my god, that is that so brutal one. for Immortals. That is... <laughs> That's honestly hard. Oh, Bjergsen diving. Pobelt's gonna get chunked by the culling. Has the egg, but double lift just does not touch the stun. Immortals flashing forward. Right over. Blows him away with the ulti. And now Bjergsen caught out position. He's gonna pop the Hemo Plague down. Healing will get there once a proc. Bjergsen just need to stay alive. Huge amount of help from the pool of Sven dives in onto Rain over Pobelt, although trying to defend his tidal wave comes in to push them away. Immortals still on the offensive. But looks out like the fight disperses. Yeah, great job there by Immortals. Uh, they pounce on the mistake from Double Lift. Pobelter catches him with a stun and no hesitation. You see Rainover flash forward, lands the ult. They deal for the full combo. Pobelter flashing in for the ignite. They pick up a kill. It's a shutdown and it does buy them some time. They need to keep looking for this. Uh, Huni, though, you know, pretty far up. Always has to be aware of that Trundle Pillar. It's going to be so hard to run away from him. And Sven and Biofrost actually straight, straight behind him. So watch this one again. Yeah, and, and Bjergsen, Bjergsen is getting aggressive. He can afford to do this. He's very, very tanky. He's not too scared, but here comes Double Lift, and it's a great wall from Pobelter. Uh, Double Lift doesn't want to flash, thinks he's out of range, but nope, it's too little too late. Uh, Rainover flashes in for the auto ult. Great job by Pobelter and Rainover capitalizing on Double Lift's mistake. Yeah, Amorto still showing that even when behind, I know when to make the play. Double Lift wasting that flash, unfortunately, but only yeah. cost him one kill. It does only cost them one kill, and they're still heavily ahead, especially when you consider uh, the stat weight of the Drakes, as well as that third one. If they can get the third one, it's 24% ATAP. Ooh, that's scary. Yeah, Monster and Renov are actually having a fight, but Renov not afraid. Red Buffalo are going to get stolen away once again by TSM. Continuing that control of the jungle. This is what Renov is known for on the champion. Fence Garen showing that, hey, I've got a pretty good Rek'Sai as well. He's doing great for himself. He's getting very tanky. Well, we talked about how much AD uh, damage there is on Immortals. 
And, you know, this is a, a, a Svenskeren who's just going to be building straight into the armor. He's not super concerned about Pull Belter just yet. Turtle, trouble? Does pop the ulti, keeps himself safe, but... Yeah, you can see the pings onto Rainover. They saw him there. They decided we don't want to commit, uh, don't want to end up, you know, overextending, especially since Double does not have the summoners uh, after that mid lane skirmish. Yeah. Svenskeren, though, just clearing out some wards. Just like TSM. I'm trying to crack the mid lane turret more than anything else. They do need a bit more room. Try and open up the map and see if they can't keep snowballing. But Pobalt has done a great job on the Anivia, keeping that turret alive for as long as possible. TSM, though, very vigilant about clearing wards out. Immortals, again, just buying time at this stage of the game, trying to make sure Huni and the rest of the squad can get going towards that mid game. Pretty interesting to see Hauntzer go for the Titanic Hydra. Uh, this time we have been seeing Ravenous is pretty much the always option, but Bjergsen may be going for a dive yeah, here. Dive Rainover, Rainover, Rainover. Like he's gone. Yeah, he's dead, I think. Randover living for a little while, but Sven does finally take him out. Bjergsen still diving in, but Huni's actually made his way in. Sanguine pull out from the stun as Huni now the focus. Sven Skaren knocks him up. Damage is there. The stun's good, but Sven gonna get the double kill. Flashes out, but still dies to Turtle on the back end. That's gonna be extra gold for that Sivir. Bjergsen is just so aggressive. On this Vladimir, he's gotten himself very ahead, and uh, he is making it look easy. Uh, probably going to be building into a Warmogs, I think. They're going again, I think. Now this is the issue. Wall's in there, but Bjergsen's still going to fight it out. Tower getting low. Bjergsen with a Crimson Rush healing goes through. Pobalt to low. Does not get egged. Turret goes to TSM, though. This is He's just ridiculous. He's crazy. <laughs> tanky. They can't push him off. But they're too far behind as far as item pacing goes, and Bjergsen is just becoming an absolute monster. He just doesn't even care about the turret. He's just zoning them off it time and time again, allowing his team uh, to get ship damage on it. And here we do have that dive. And you can see Bjergsen just walking up, constantly threatening the dive, and now he sees his moment as Fenserin comes in. They make the collapse. Bjergsen tanking up the turret. Rainover goes down, and so close uh, to picking up Pobelter as well. Um, but, you know, in the end, the turret is going to fall. Uh, Sven Skarin will trade his life, but it's a double kills for Sven, and it's multiple flashes to pick up that jungler's kill. Yep, so definitely a worth trade there for Sven. As TSM continuing their aggression in this game, Immortals, though, doing a great job of damage control in this game. It's only 2,000 gold up still for TSM, which is a nice lead, but Immortals have sort of yeah. kept it at that uh, position for a number of minutes now. The big question though, can Immortals contest this next Infernal? They cannot afford to go down three Infernal Drakes to none. Uh, they know that they're hovering around here. They have their whole squad already in place. They really want to fight for this. And this is going to be a massive uh, deciding point in this game. Oh, TSM have had a chance to spend all their gold just yet, but definitely grouping around it to try and fight. Like just Sven with a bit of extra gold in his back pockets. Yeah, you know, Doublelift did just base. Uh, he's running back out there as fast as they can. Immortals is trying to rush it, though. You know, if Doublelift gets here, he's going to still draw. Steal! Sven Skarin takes away the Drake, and Immortals book it. That is heartbreaking for Immortals. Sven Skarin does not get zoned out. Immortals knew they couldn't fight. They tried to rush it, and Sven Skarin comes up huge for TSM. Big play there as the pillar's going to cut them off at the pass. Bubble there as well, TSM. Trying to buy time for this turret, but Minding Wave not cooperating. Immortals yeah. here to defend in time. Just look at the AD carry item, this agent. Another right. dive coming in. Bjergsen just doesn't care. Bjergsen double ult. He's been scared. gonna egg Belter on the left hand side. Bjergsen with a 1v2. Takes out two, and TSM explode under the turret. Bjergsen is unstoppable in this game. Two more kills for the mid laner. Just destroying them. TSM wants the Baron. And they're gonna go straight for it. Triple Infernal Drake TSM. Gonna try and take this Baron down, and Immortals are nowhere to be seen for the contest. They, they're gonna try something, I think, but uh, they don't really have much chance. Wild Turtle, Adrian moving over. This is desperation time for Immortals. They don't want to give it up, but they cannot get through Bjergsen. There's no way. Yeah, they're gonna go for a Bjergsen. A double lift on the Turtle. Turtle gonna go down. Bjergsen flashes in for the Ace with Tides of Blood. The There's delayed the Baron as well. Ace Baron, three Infernal Dragons. Why not? TSM are making this one look easy. 11 and 2, but let's watch this beautiful dive again. Yeah, watch the side fight here from Bjergsen. The 1v2 on Huni and Rainover. They cannot do enough damage to get through him. He's too fed. Pobelter, in the, in the meantime, has gotten locked down. A nice CC chain from Biocross uh, does land the bubble after the knockup from Sven. So fantastic fights on both sides, but Bjergsen is going off. This guy is unstoppable. And now he's going aggressive with his build, picks up the Rylize, almost has his, uh, his Zonias as well. I just do not see how they will ever 
be killing Gurks in this game. Yeah, and TSM approaching 7,000 gold in the lead, 11 2 in kills, and now up two turrets with the Baron buff. Immortals were already playing on the back foot. This will be quite the storm to weather through this buff, but Immortals, if any team can do it, they're the ones that can hold on. But TSM, they're just not letting them breathe in this game. No, they're not. And one of the toughest parts is that <sighs> TSM is a great team to die, right? We're, we're showing how easy it is for them to just aggress under these turrets. It's not like they can't get in there and finish the game off. And I think they're going to be looking to do just that. Uh, TSM you know, smells blood in the water. And I think they want to finish the game. They're going to be looking for mid lane turret and they go for the dive. Three lane pressure right now. Pogelta getting zoned up by Sven. Uh, sorry, going to join in as Rainover almost gets himself trunked by double. That's going to be a tower in mid going down. Mortal's not here in time to defend. This inhibitor, are you going to give it up? Because TSM is going to take it if you let them. There's no choice to fight now. Immortals has to give it up. They didn't fight at the turret. They can't fight for the inhibitor. But TSM is going top lane. And uh, this may be where Immortals tries to make their stand. Because I think if they don't, uh, TSM is just going to end it. On to bottom lane as well. So again, that's multiple lane pressure continuing for TSM. Plenty of Baron buff left to play with. Huni now just gets his teleport back up as well. Even Sven moving between the lanes, keeping the Baron empowered minions in. This is real tough for Immortals to defend right now. So hard as Sven Scare moving up here too. Uh, the minions are very tanky, especially you know this early in the game. Wild Turtle doesn't even have a second item completed. Rain over in trouble. Double lift going aggressive. Yeah, and if you're with the wall and double lift says, "All right, I'll just try and kill your mid laner or jungler." Sorry, as Huni is going to defend against Haunter, but Haunter is. Not particularly perturbed. Since Garen actually may be threatening a dive, they'll go in for it. Ulti popped. Hooney is very squishy. And now Bjergsen's in as well. That'll force the flash out. Karma gonna get him to safety. Adrian pops the exhaust as well, but TSM, they just do not stop. Yeah, make it two inhibitors. Why not? And Bjergsen going out. Pobelter, yeah. he doesn't have egg. Pobelter's dead. Double takes him out. Randover trying to get out from under Bjergsen, but Bjergsen just pops the ulti and chases them into their fountain. Bjergsen locked up, but he's just tanking four members on his own. I think TSM could end it. We'll see if they're going to stay around. Super minions are here, and they are looking to end this game 25 minutes in. TSM lays a beating on Immortal. TSM going in to try and clean it up. The fight is starting. Wild well, Toto gets blown up on the left-hand side. And the Nexus is exposed. TSM looking for blood. Adrian gets popped. Immortals cannot defend. Hooney melts in the eyes of TSM. Rain over the last man standing. Immortals not this game. Rain over just lives to see his Nexus die. TSM with one hell of a game number one. Wow. <laughs> that was a statement game if I have ever seen it. People saying, ooh, I don't know. Team's looking close. TSM comes in here. Cleans up the game so fast. Every lane got smashed. Uh, the jungle advantage heavily in the favor of Sven Skarin, even with that disadvantage. And TSM looked incredible in game one. And what do we keep hearing? It's a new TSM. Strong players in every single lane.